Okay, you guys, for today, for this particular wreath, I'm going to be using poly deco poly mesh. This is a wide foil mesh. I will have um, it listed in the description box below. Today, I'm just going to be doing a normal ruffle wreath with some curls added to it. So, I need to cut my mesh. This one... This particular one is so pretty and shiny. I'm going to be cutting this to 20 inch pieces. There are 10 feet in this roll of mesh. So if I cut them to 20 inches a piece, I should get exactly 18. I'm also going to be using this poly deco mesh. Now this mesh here has a very light foil it's not basic mesh but it's a green this poly deco mesh that's not can you see the difference maybe you can tell that in the camera hopefully but i'm going to be cutting this mesh to 10 inch pieces and i need 18 pieces and then i also have a red one like this that i'm going to be cutting to make the curls i only need these 10 inches a piece so how I do that is, I'm going to put it on 30, find my rock that I use, and start out on 30, go to the 20, cut it. Now I could do, I could do this, you, this method only cutting these strips to 8 inches, but since I have plenty of it and I went for my curls you know to be a little on the thicker side I'm going to do 10 inch strips now the way that I do the curls I take my mesh curl side up go in make a curl with it just like this and then I will add a red one to this So let me get my red mesh. Sorry, guys. This is the red mesh that I'm going to be using. Put it to 30 inches. Cut it on my 20 inch line because that's 10 inches. Do the same with this. Curl it up. You know, try to get it even as even, even as you can. But if you can't, it's not that big of a deal. So this is going to be my ruffle with added curl wreath. I've got both of my curls. I'll clip them together. Now if I was already putting these in, I would just hold it with my fingers like this and continue to work on my wreath. But first I have to cut this mesh to 20 inch pieces. Okay, so let me... Okay, so you saw how I cut these. Okay, I'm going to continue to cut the rest of the mesh. And when I get back, I'll have everything ready and we'll get started on the ruffle with curl added wreath. Take a look at my wreath frame. This is a 14 inch wire wreath frame. I put my own pipe cleaners on it. One on every crossbar and for are the first two rungs. One in between it, them two, again on the first two rungs, and then one, not on the crossbar up here, but in the middle, going around. So I have six on in the middle and twelve on the outside for a total of eighteen pipe cleaners. The ribbons for this particular wreath that I'm going to be making are this uh, barn ribbon. Merry Christmas. Isn't it beautiful? Along with, this is two and a half inches, along with a one and a half inch red velvet ribbon. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the other set, I'm going to be using this two and a half inch red ribbon, along with the gray one and a half. I like to call this tweed. That's what it reminds me of with these ribbons. Here is the sign. 
Hopefully that won't too much of a glare on it. Merry Christmas. And I just loved it with this. With this ribbon. Isn't that cute? This is the mesh that I cut to 20 inches. Lay it curl side down. See how it wants to curl up? Lay it curl side down. I put a rock on the end of mine. Go to the middle of my mesh on this side. Tuck it under. And ruffle it up the middle. This is a good, sturdy, heavy foil mesh. I absolutely love it. Twist it off a couple of times. Spread it out. Make sure all of your remaining pipe cleaners are standing up so you don't skip any. Okay, now I can go in with the red and the green. I just wanted to add some green to the wreath itself because the pine trees are green. Again, I'm just rolling these up, not super tight. Roll up the green. I'm going to lay these down into the pipe cleaner now. Poof these out a little bit so they look pretty. Now, for the, the, the next thing I'll be adding to this pipe cleaner is the ribbon only. So let's keep going for the next one. Again, lay the mesh out. I like to put a rock on mine. You know, you don't have to if you can stay in the middle. It's just the way that I do it. Curl it up on this end. Walk my fingers up the middle. And this is called the ruffle and curl method. Or ruffle and roll. It just depends on what you want to call it. A ruffle or a roll. Go to the next pipe cleaner. Put it down in there. And tie it up. And when you get done putting your first mesh down in there, you want to go back and stand it up, overlap it, so it looks kind of like a flower. And pull up the sides so that they're up against each other. That makes them look pretty. My red and green aren't going on in any particular way. Scrunch these in the middle. And lay them down in there. So do you guys understand what it is that I'm doing? If you have any questions, please leave them down in the description box. Okay, next one. I'll do one more with you guys. And then I'm going to carry on around the outside of the wreath. Curl it under. You want to curl it under so that, that rough edge is not showing and walk your fingers straight up the middle so i hope you guys understand what it is that i'm doing now you guys you can get mesh from a lot of places you can get it from hobby lobby joann's michael's i get mine from my wholesaler online but i will link some places down below where you should be able to find some I really hope you enjoy this kind of content, and if you do, please consider subscribing, hitting the bell for notifications, and the like button. That would help me out tremendously. I told you guys I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers. I am a little over 8,000 right now. Okay, so you guys get the drift of what I'm doing. I'm going to be putting in the ruffle, and then the curls. And I'm going to go around and put it in every one on the outside of the wreath board. And when I get done, we'll move on to the middle. Okay, you guys, I've completed the outside of the wreath <clears throat> with the ruffles and the curls. And this is what we're getting so far. And that's about how thick it is at this point. So now I'm going to continue. I only have six ties in the middle. I'm going to do one with you guys and then I will carry on. I'm pretty much just doing the exact same thing. I take the mesh, lay it down, curl side down. And of course, the closer you get to the roll, 
the more curly the mesh is. So again, I like to put a rock on mine just so it makes it easier. Not everyone does that. It's just a preference. Go up the center. Hold it tight. Come over here and place the ruffle down into the inside tie. Just a couple times. Fan it out. And of course, before I before I, my wreath is totally completed, I go around and make sure that everything is fluffed up and fluffed out the way that I want it. Okay, I'm rolling this one. I'm going to go ahead and put these in as I go. Hold it. Now, like I said, if you can't hold it between your fingers, then put it in a bodabra or in a chip clip or what have you. I'm going to take these and lay them down in here as well. And I want through the curls to go side to side instead of in and out. In other words, I want for these curls to go sideways and not, I don't want them to go like this. I want them to go sideways. The same angle that the ruffle underneath is at. Okay, so this is what we're getting with this. This way, when I put the ribbons in, my ribbons will lay pretty and they won't be all sticking straight up. One more with you guys and then I'm going to go on, pleat the middle, and then we're going to move on to the sign and the bow. Not so sure I'm going to put a bow on this one, but we will see. I don't add a bow to every single one of my wreaths. Here we go. Now I'm going to take these two. Put them down into the tie. Tie it up in. Making sure that my curls are side to side again. So there we go. Okay, I'm going to complete the middle. And then when I come back, we'll work on the bow and the sign. Okay, you guys, I'm coming up to the very last roll that I'm inserting next to the ruffle. I like to put the open side or the raw side of the ruffle up against each other. Just lays better that way. Put it down in here. This will be the last roll as well. Okay, now I want to go around and make sure all my pipe cleaners are standing up so I don't skip any when I start to put the ribbons in. This is very important to do this because I've missed them quite a few times from not doing this. Making sure that your mesh is standing up against each other as you go around. And don't worry, the frays can be cut off in the end. See how that really fills the wreath in real nice and full. I think it's so pretty. Here we go with everything in it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start adding the sets of ribbon to the outside of the wreath. I'm going to start with these. Again, the two and a half inch red along with one and a half inch gray tweed looking ribbon. I crease it in the middle, lay it down, mark up the center of the ribbon. I'm going to straighten out those wires. And put it down. Tying it on there. And since I'm done using my pipe cleaner now, I will cut it off. Every time I place a ribbon in it, I'll cut it off. And then I'll bend the tip of the remaining 
pipe cleaner from where I cut it down in there so that it does not scratch anything and I know it's not gonna come undone or anything so I'll make sure it's super tight so there we have these on to the next now I'll go to the red barn ribbon Merry Christmas with the one and a half inch red velvet which I just think is so pretty Fold it, line them up, fold it in half, crease, lay it down. Now, since this barn ribbon is one direction, it's directional ribbon, the barn, you can't see it, the barn and the Merry Christmas, all of them that I put in need to be facing the exact same way. Again, put these on top of each other, crunch it up. Get a few in here and I'm going to turn it around and show you what they look like. And then again, I will continue around the outside of the wreath. Any embellishments that I would decide to put in here, I'm not going to need my pipe cleaner for. So therefore, I don't have a problem cutting it off. Sometimes, I do keep the pipe cleaner on there just for that purpose. For my embellishments to be able to stick to. Fold it in half. Crease it, lay it down, scrunch it in the middle. You either want them straight or you want them like birdie wings. Here's what birdie wing, wings means. My mentor and my friend, Lori Jacobs, I'm in a couple of her groups. She has showed us how to do that. Looks very pretty that way. Okay, I'm going to turn it around and show you what we have so far. And then I will continue going around the outside. Here we go. Here's the ribbons. We have the barn and the velvet with the tweed gray and the red. I really, really like it. I'm going to go around the outside, finish adding the ribbons, and I'll come back before I start the inside. Okay, you guys, I've completed the ribbon on the outside, and that's how it looks. Absolutely beautiful. I'm loving it. Can't get the whole wreath in, doing the best I can. Do it this way as well. Okay, so I only have six more ties on the inside to add the ribbons to. So let me go ahead and do that. Again, lay the one and a half on the two and a half, put it down, crease it in the middle, gather it up. You don't have to put the one and a half on top of the two and a half. You can put them any way you want. You can put the thicker one on top if you want, or the wider one on top. It's totally up to you. That's what makes wreath making so fun. You can make it your own. There is not a certain way that it has to be. I like to pull these up when I'm adding curls. Get them in there so they lay somewhat flat, like this, and fan them out, and everybody does that different as well. Okay, the next one, do one more with you guys, and then I'm going to carry on around and finish the last four. Here's the middle ribbons I've added right here and right here. So I'll finish the last four pipe cleaners with the ribbon sets and then when I get back we'll make the bow. Okay the completed base with the ribbon tails and the curls everything in it. So let me set the wreath aside and get the bow materials out 
and then we will make a bow and put the sign on. Okay, you guys, for this part of the video, I did have music playing with this while I was making the bow, but I found out it had a copyright on it, so I wasn't able to use it. So I'm just going to do a voiceover for this part. Um, as you can see, I'm making the bow. And I already had it in fast motion, so I didn't change that. But I'm just kind of going to try to explain to you what I'm doing. Um, I'm making the bow on my easy bow. And then I'm going to take a pipe cleaner, I do believe. Or no, I'm taking it. You have two pipe cleaners, putting them together, pulling my bow up, tying it, fluffing it out the best that I can so that it will look nice on the wreath. This is the first time I've ever done a voiceover, so please give me some grace. So my bow is done. I haven't cut the bow tails yet. I think I'm trying it on for size. And I've decided that I'm going to put it right here. So this is where my bow is going to go. And then next I will be working on my sign. Now I usually do not use wire on my signs. I just don't prefer to put holes in my signs. But for this particular wreath, I decided that I was going to. So I take my hole punch. It's a jewelry hole punch. Punch four holes in each corner. I put one hole in each corner and then I'm adding the wire to it so that I can tie it onto the wreath. I make these signs in my shop. This just so happens to be a Merry Christmas Red Barn sign. I think it's beautiful. It's all snowy and Christmassy. I'm using 22 gauge wire. And putting that again in all four corners. So then after I get my wire put on it so I have double wire I see if I like it where I want it um, I kind of figure it out here in a little bit I think my bow looks good right there and I'm going to want to put my sign um, next to it. So my sign and my bow will be side by side. So what I do, I'm holding it up now to take a look at it and I, I'm going to apply my sign first, putting my wires down into my mesh. I like to go right through my mesh, twisting the ends of the wires together and sticking it down through there with my handy dandy darning needle. I love to use this needle. It works great for me. And I just go right through my mesh, keeps it really stable that way. and tying it to my wreath frame never to the mesh always to the wreath frame so I'm going to do this to all four sides get it exactly the way I want it where I want it to be placed
and just putting it down in there and tying it to the metal frame. I like it right there. I'm fluffing everything out. Now for my bow. My bow is going to be tied on with the pipe cleaners that I used. I could fluff my bow for days on end. Holding it up again to check it out. And yes, that's where I'm going to place it. So again, I'm going to take my handy dandy darning needle that I use because it goes straight through the mesh. Put it on the pipe cleaners. Stick it down in there. And tie it onto the metal frame once again. Okay, I've decided where I want everything. I've got my bow and my sign tied on. And now we are finally back to the video. Okay, y'all. I thought that I had all the music taken out, but apparently I didn't. So now I'm just showing you how I'm putting my bow on. And fluffing out my bow tails. I'm dovetailing them. I don't want them to cover up my sign. So I kind of go back and forth and figure out which way I want it. I think it turned out really pretty. And you guys, like I said, I have never... Alright you guys, I still have to cut the phrase off, make sure everything's fluffed up. But for now, I'm going to leave it the way I have it, except I may go through and add some flowers to it. I'm not sure yet. You guys will see what it looks like coming right up. And again, this is the basic ruffle and roll or curl deco mesh Christmas wreath. Here's a look at it from this side. I think it turned out really cute. Every, you know, I'll have all of my ribbons straightened out and stuff before I get my pictures of it. This wreath will be available in my Etsy shop. Don't forget to check out my ribbon and sign set in my Etsy store. And listen, guys, if you haven't, <coughs> excuse me, please like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications. So you'll be notified every time I go live or put up a new video. So this is all I have for you for this particular Christmas wreath. Now I'm going to move on to the next. See you in a little bit. Bye-bye.